Johnny O. Jackson, my man. How you doing, brother? I'm good, man. What's going on? Not much. It's been forever, man. I know. How come you big? You still so fucking swole. Why? What? How you still so swole, man? Look at you. <laughs> it's just me, man. This is me. I don't know how you do it. And I'm not doing nothing special. You know what I mean? It's just what I've done all my life. Yeah, you still going nowhere, man. You still training? That's why. As long as you train. Well, of course, I'm still training. Yeah. So you don't? You never feel like ah. Well, I did. You know, I stopped for a minute there. Yeah. Um, when I was building my gym at the time, all that construction, I was so tired and what do you so mean? busy. What do you mean building your gym? Well, not building, but doing construction at my gym. When I had opened it, I would sold it to Mike with Destination now. But I had opened up a gym in uh, 2017 when I retired. Uh huh. Yeah, I opened up a gym for myself and my clients and stuff like that. So um, when I was, you know, in the construction of that, Man, it, that was so far from working out. I didn't have time. I was so tired. I mean, yeah, I get up. At, you know, it was during the winter time when I started. So I would get up and it would be dark. I would get home and it was dark. You know. Yeah. I mean. So I how? No so so how? How long did you stop then? I I actually sold it uh, in September. Um, what was four or five months before all the COVID stuff hit? Yeah. So how long did yeah. you how long did you stop training? Oh oh how long did I stop training? Oh God man! I, I, to be honest, I actually got into a, a funk where I was like almost scared to train because you know I went once I stopped, you know I started remembering you know how I felt after I worked out with Branch and it felt like you was in a car crash every day man yeah. and you know you just wake up and you know, get ready to get up and you're just like, you can't, it's just like, it's, everything was just so hard. Um, and then once I got away from it, I didn't want that feeling to come back. You know what I mean? I start feeling better, you know, dropping weight and all that kind of stuff. And I was just like, man, I don't want to feel like that no more. So for a while there, I was really hesitant. I didn't even know whether I would come back and work out again, to tell you the truth. Mm. Um, once I started with construction of, of that gym, and I was pretty much like, you know, I'm going to train people and I'm going to be dad for now, yeah. you know? Um, and that was kind of my mindset until me and Brand started working out again together um, and start hooking up and going to destination. And um, that's when I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to do the Arnold again. And then I started, you know, we went to China. Actually, we went to China with we the Iron, Iron World Tour um, for gas in China. And there... You know, we went up against a lot of, the, of course, Chinese people, and it was the strongest man in China and all this kind of stuff that came out to train with me and Branch. And we, of course, we smoked day behind. <laughs> you know, every gym we went, we, I mean, those dudes lasted for about three sets. Yeah. Then they sat their ass down or in a pile of sweat, and we still going. They know you. They weren't used to it. In the groove. And so that's when I started. Man, I'm a, I'm training like this. I'm always compete again. Yeah. And so that's when I did the Arnold. And uh, what was it, 290, 220? And you also, and you also competed, uh, what's that? At the Chicago. At the Chicago Pro, I remember, where you looked yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, see, the thing was, see, I, I could talk, talk to you. <laughs> talk to was, me. The Arnold, the Arnold was such a disappointment, man. I mean, if I looked like I did in Chicago at Arnold, it, it would have been a different ball game, mm. but... I it, it was a letdown at the Arnold and I messed up because Chicago I did myself at the Arnold I started doing it myself and then I saw George in Dubai I had went out to Dubai and uh ran across George the hell I went to Dubai for I think I went with for Mutant the Dubai yeah, the went, Dubai went, Muscle Show yeah I went for Mutant work at the booth and I uh, ran across George, and George was like, yo, man, George Farrell, he was like, yo, man, uh, I heard you're going to compete. Yeah, I've, I got a phone call. You know, what's up? You know, we got to hook up and stuff like that. And I was like, uh, then I was like, you know what? Probably be smart. I haven't done this in a couple of years. Probably be smart to have an extra pair of eyes, this, that, and the other. But then I got caught up on listening to only what he wanted me to do, and that just, it just didn't work out. You know, the timing was off. By the time we got to the show, 
and everything like that. And everything was coming really, it really was coming along really well, just like Chicago, but it just fell apart. You know, mm. I depended on him, you know, at the show and then, you know, back my own self up. So it, it was dumb me. And so it didn't come out the way it should have came. I didn't come out the way I should have came out. Yeah. But Chicago, I was like, this is on me. Chicago I was, so was disappointed in the yeah. Arnold. I was like, man. man, you know, this is if this is going to be the end, this is the way I want to walk away. Yeah. You know? I was really surprised because I remember I was sitting there in Chicago. <laughs> uh, was it, what was it, in Atlanta or in Tampa? What was what? The Chicago, yeah, yeah. the Chicago Pro was that was that the one that was in Atlanta or Atlanta. At, Atlanta. Atlanta? So I remember, and I seen you. I was like, Johnny on stage. I didn't even know you were competing until you yeah. stepped until you step on stage. And I was like, Look at Johnny go! I mean, you the condition was yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, I think like I don't know what happened, but you, I think you got severely overlooked at that show. Well, yeah, and I understand. Man, you know me, man. I don't bitch and complain and no, all that kind of stuff. You no. know, I do me and do what I can do. But I was definitely super proud of what, the way I came in. Yeah, that's what I want. I was so disappointed from the Arnold. I was like, that's not how I'm going to be remembered. This is how I'm going to be remembered if if I am in this kind of condition. You know, so I was hurting. I'm going to be honest. Really? I was, bruh, I was hurting. <laughs> hurting. Because I, I remember you like to, you know, I don't know. I, I know you stopped that a long time ago, but, you know, I know that your usual um, ritual routine every morning was like a, a, a 12 donuts or something. Oh, for, yeah. For breakfast. So that's, I know you stopped that a long time ago because you said you can't do it no more. Yeah, but, for sure. But so you suffered, so you suffered you into the show in, in, in Chicago. Suffer. You looked word. like it. You sure looked like you suffered because yeah, you were in shape, shape. Word, man. I I didn't know I was going to make it. At one point, I was just praying to God that let's let me get on stage. I was like, Lord, I just want to show. I yeah. just want to show myself because I'm in such good condition. Right. You know what I mean? Just let me get on stage one time and show my condition. And then if I go home after that, that's cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, and then the whole thing was, I, it wasn't. I wasn't finished though. You know, that's the thing is I was hurting so bad. I couldn't really get the food in that I really need to get in to really fill out, mm. you know? So I was half, I wasn't really as full as I should have been. If I could have really filled out, it would have been a big difference also. Yeah. Yeah. No, but it looked, it looked good to me, man. I was like, damn, he, he put it together, nailed it, nailed it. Cause you don't see that. Like you don't see that no more like that. You know, the conditions, no. the condition is missing, you know? It really is, man. I, I uh, said something the other day, you know, um, I don't know if you saw where or you know about Sean Clarita and how he wants to do the open and 212 Mr. Yes. Olympia. Yeah. And he's getting getting told right now he has to choose one or the other. And I think that's unfair because when they had the master Olympia, like Vince Taylor, that Don Youngblood, all them, they got to do the regular Olympia and then the Master Olympia, and it was the same weekend. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand why they blocking him for that. I don't. But what I, I'm I, getting I, at, mm -hmm. but, but what I'm getting at is, I think it would be good for the open guys to have to compete against guys like that. You know, these two twelve guys need to stop. You know, thinking they're not big enough, they don't have enough mass to to compete with the open guys. They need to put themselves out there because a lot of open guys. Are, are dropping the ball and not showing up in condition like these 212 guys. Mm -hmm. And they step up in the open, I guarantee you it'll open up some eyes and these guys get their shit together. I totally agree. And I think you, you're right. I agree with if they let you compete in the open, if they let you qualify, they, can't, they shouldn't deny you to compete because they let you step on the stage in the open. They let you compete in the open. He won fair and square. <laughs> He's, he earned it. He's qual yes, he earned it. He's qualified. They, there's, you know, I, I don't see why they shouldn't let him do both if he wants to do both. It's up to him. Right. You know? I would think so. Yeah. This is America, man. This is <laughs> the land of the free, the <laughs> land we, where we can make choices. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah, I think, I think it's, you know, they should have told him before that either he can't do the open if he's, in all, if he's a 212 guy or if he does the open, they should have said, listen, this will not count as a qualification, or right. even worse, not don't let him win. 
<laughs> no, no. If you let him win, you're basically showing him that he can hang with these you guys. You said okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then win, you gave him the nod. Yeah, it's I true. Mean, I would like to see him in the open. Why not? I, well, obviously, he won that Legends show. Yeah. You know, he came up he, and he showed out, man, because there were some guys that was more than 50 pounds heavier than he was. A hundred. Oh, wow. Uh, C- uh, C- I, said, I said Cedric. Uh, Sergio was a hundred pounds bigger. No. Yeah. Yeah. C- C- Sergio was 275 or something. Wow. And and Sean Clarita was 174. So that don't mean yeah. anything. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Man. So so yeah, I'm to- I totally agree with you. And I told Sean also at the honor, I said, if they let you compete, if they let you qualify, they need to let you compete if you want to. Yeah, man. This guy yeah. came in, showed how I mean, won the show. Man, he looked awesome. I have to give it to him. Yeah, I, you know, I, he's a little motherfucker. Yeah, but. true. Woo! I I wonder I wonder who who said he can't compete. Well, he said Dan Sullivan is let, telling him that he didn't say he can't compete. I don't want to put I don't want to put words in his mouth. You know what I mean? But he's saying that he's he's being told he has to choose one or the other. So I guess that's the same thing. But the words <laughs> that I heard is. They, you know what I mean? It's he like, it's like, this is almost like if I go to a car dealership and I'm looking at two cars and I can, I can afford to buy two and I want to buy both. And they said, no, you can only buy one. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I said, no, I'm going to buy both because I'm qualified. Yeah. I'm qualified to buy both. That's right. Period. Yeah. I think it's something. I don't see the argument, but. Well, I haven't heard for sure that is that he can't. So we'll, we'll, uh, let's see. Maybe it's still open. Maybe it's still open for discussion. And, yeah. You yeah. Know? Because it, cause at the end of the day, it's kind of like, how would it be possible? Because the pre. Well, it would be possible because the pre. Friday, Saturday. The open pre judging is Friday night after the finals. For yep. the uh, for the other guys, yeah, exactly. So he could move right into the open. Be done. He could be done the two twelve and then go into the open. Don't even need he to. Pump. Don't have, he no. don't even have to go back and forth, back and forth. He'll be done with the two twelve. Don't even need to pump up no more. He's still ready to go. Ready to go. Yeah, yeah. I, have, um, Dexter won that last Master Olympia, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. And uh, what year was that? Because I twelve two two thousand twelve. Was it twelve? Wow! Yeah, I thought it was later than that. I thought it was like two thousand eight or something. No, 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 but no. Yeah, no. Wow. Yeah, I, I, so I mean, I remember competing, and they all him, Darren Charles, and a bunch of them stayed and you know competed in the the Masters. You know, I was I like, oh, I, I, I competed there. Here. I came back for the Masters in two twelve. I remember. Oh, did you compete too? I retired in two thousand ten. And then two years later, they did the Masters. I came back for the Masters. That's it. Okay. Wow. So I unretired the day before, and I retired the day after because I was like, this is it. <laughs> so talking about the Masters, I, I, I had some rumors come through me. I mean, somebody says, yeah. like, Johnny Jackson is contemplating of doing the Masters. Oh, yeah, man. So, you, so you're not done. You know I'm done. Like I ain't gonna go. I ain't, I ain't could be against no open class competitors. Yeah. You know I ain't no fool. My man ain't raised no fool. You know <laughs> these guys just took it to another level. You know I go down there and there's something sagging here and there. And like, <laughs> <laughs> right, come on, Johnny. Yeah. What you doing, man? No, but you listen. Know? I look at you and I don't see. I don't see your age. You you 52 now. 51. 51. So hey, can nobody tell if you shave that beard off? You look like you're 30. Yeah, I know it was off a couple weeks ago. I shaved it all off. How do you grow well, hair so a fast? Bit of goatee because I don't want to look too weird. My shit looked like a light bulb. My shit, my shit was so skinny. My shit was like, <laughs> I'm like, damn. You know, let me keep a little bit of hair on my chin so I don't look too weird. Yeah. Where, 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 did, where did you go? Huh? Where did you go? A couple of where weeks ago. I, did, did, you said you, huh? you you went somewhere a couple of weeks ago. No, I said I had shaved it all off a couple of weeks ago. Oh, so for no reason? Yeah, no, yeah. Just it was just time to shave it all off. So you didn't go to so, the FIBO? You didn't go to the FIBO? I didn't. No, oh, we didn't okay. go. Oh, okay. Yeah. So so talk talk to me about the the the, uh, the amateur um, amateur Masters Olympia. What uh, No, man, not man, I'm just excited about it. Seriously. Yeah. I mean, um just like you said in the beginning, I'm still training 
pretty much the same way. Yeah. Um, I'm a little bit, a little bit smarter. Not really. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I'm still training. I ain't gonna stay here a lot. I'm still training pretty much the same way I train, man. Yeah. Um, you know, some days not as not as heavy, but I go as heavy as I can. People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm gonna grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables, F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. Um, I feel good. Um, my feet were hurting for a while, man. I'm gonna be honest. Um, getting ready for Chicago, I, my dumb ass started running with Rebecca. You know, my wife runs marathons, so I got out there and was like, man, we could do some cardio together in the morning. And mind you, if I go in the morning by myself and run a mile, it'll take me probably about, I get back like, take about 26, 27 minutes. Mm -hmm. When I go run with her, we got back to this son of a gun about 12 minutes. Mm. You know, I was hurting too, boy, hurting. And uh, through all that, man, I messed up my feet. My feet was ankles and feet were hurting so bad. Um, but now I finally got over that and I feel good because at one point I was like, man, I don't think I can do cardio to enough cardio, you know what I mean, to get in shape. But they actually feel good. I went to a chiropractor. He adjusted um, adjusted things and a massage therapist and they feeling good. So yeah. I have, there's no troubles, man. I'm having no injuries, you know I mean? no injuries, feeling nothing. Good. Huh? No injuries. I'm feeling good, man. I got nothing. But don't you don't you sit back sometimes, and, and especially now we see me just lost Cedric. Don't you you know tell yourself sometimes you know what do I have to prove? Why should I? Yeah, no, it's not, man. I, that's how see, I feel. That's the whole that's the whole thing. It's never been that for me. Hmm. You know, I mean, you know me, um, and you know, of course, I wanted to win shows, and when I worked with you, I more wanted to win shows to make you proud. You know what I mean? Because of who you are and, you know, how I felt about you and the respect, you know, I have and everybody else have rightfully for you. So I don't want to let you down more than anything else um, for myself. Everything, man, more or less is all, all my life, man. And it's not because I'm selfish, but it's been for me. You know, um, it's never been like trying to prove something to somebody or, you know what I mean? It, uh, well, prove to Rebecca I can make some money. Right. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's been mostly a paycheck. Like mm. my brother, you know, who got me into bodybuilding and stuff like that, that passed away, you know, um, in 92, um, you know, doing it with him, doing it with him and then him passing away and just grabbing up his passion. You know what I mean? Um, really drove me into, you know, doing the bodybuilding thing and going as far as turning pro. Um, but for me, myself, um, I didn't have, you know, that deep passion like you yourself have for bodybuilding. Like you knew all the competitors and you wouldn't, even, you wouldn't really know this about me. I'm just, I'm being honest. Um, my brother followed it. I mean, wholeheartedly he knew everybody fought every day, regimented. I ate McDonald's, man. They donuts. <laughs> they, you know what I mean? And genetically, I was able to, you know, have a nice body, have a nice shape and stuff like that. And then training it, just, it was really easy. I say easy, it's not easy, but it was kind of easy for me to look good, you know what I mean? To yeah. look that part, you know? So in doing that, I didn't really, you know, had that deep drive to like, I need to change. Cause I was always big. I was always muscular, always big my whole life. So I never had that, you know, um, thing where I had somebody over me, like I need to get bigger or I need to prove to them I'm not skinny, I can get big and all that stuff. I was already like that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, like I said, with my brother passing away and I was in the military and I thought that's where I was going to be and that's where I was going to retire and everything, you know, because I was 10 years in um, when he passed away. Um, and so, like I said, his passion that he threw inside me made me get out of the military. And it was like something we was doing together and drove me to, you know, compete turn pro and all that stuff but i could have i would have been just fine working in another job you know being me i still would be me still doing 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The saying the silly things and, you know, different things that I do um, doing a different job. So it always have been a job for me, not particularly doing something to prove something. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm, so I'm, if that makes any sense to you. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. I, I was just wondering because like we, we like, you know, I, I can't even believe we, we're talking like this. We at the age now, you look, you're 51. I'm going to be 56 next month. Where we, uh, you know, where where uh, this is me. I, I I talk about myself now. When I see all this stuff happening, right, I'm, I'm telling myself it's like, you know what? I'm kind of glad I got the fuck out. But time I got the fuck out ten years or twelve years ago. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, you know, there's a lot of people. Uh, I don't want to say anything wrong, but there's a lot of people doing stuff, doing right. doing right. certain well, things. And, you know, I, I was just realistic to myself. And back in 2010 or 2009, I realized, 2008, I realized, listen, I'm at a point now where I'm not getting better. Right. So now it's going backwards. There's no, there's, right. It doesn't matter what you do, you know. And that, that was when I told myself, this is a time to leave. This is a time to stop and to move on and do something else, you know. But some people just don't get that, I think. Some people yeah. still believe they can st- still got it. It doesn't matter how old they are. And I think that's a mistake. Yeah, for sure. And I'm, I don't think that will trust me. I mean, you heard me in the beginning. Yeah. And I said, I ain't dumping in no open clan because I know damn yeah. well this shit don't look like it used to. Yeah. You know, I'm, no, I'm not foolish. Um, but, you know, I know, you, 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 you know, I've trained my whole life just like you, you know, worked out. Um, we put so much into this, you know, um, throughout the years of being pro and competing, man, I did 80 something pro shows, you know? So that just example of, I was, you know I was going to get to that. You know, I, I'm checking on Vic, Wikipedia and it says over 50, you did over 80. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. That gotta be, yeah, a, man. I that gotta be shit. like my first few years, I did eight shows in each year. You know, for at least three years in a row, I've done. So you must be up year. there. You must be up there with Dexter when it comes to shows. Yeah, for sure. I know we were going back and forth. Like he would do one, and he would have more than me. Then I would do one, and I would have more than him. Then you know what I mean. So yeah. at one point, we're going back and forth. At one time, but who did the most shows? Mm. You know, yeah. um, that's crazy. So, Eighty shows. People don't understand. That's crazy. It's and. But it, to get in that condition yeah. over and over and over again, yeah. man, is insane. But go back to what you're saying also with you're you're absolutely right, man, with, you know, all the stuff that happened. And of course, uh, God bless the dead Cedric, man. Oh, my man. Mm. Just crazy, man. Uh, you know, it definitely make you take a step back and, and think, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, make you realize, you know, we are we are human you yeah. know what i mean we're yeah. all vulnerable to you know whatever happened at any moment um but also just like how i taught my kids you know i have to do the same thing because if i don't then it doesn't mean nothing what i told them doesn't mean nothing you know what i mean as of um you know you gotta you, yeah, and I'm losing my train of thought thinking about God, I got so much going in my head right yeah, now because yeah. it's such a big thing, you know what I mean? And I'm so heartbroken over Cedric too, you know what I mean? And I'm not trying to be dumb about things, you know, but you can't let what happened out there predict what you do, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? I teach my kids um, to never let anybody, you know, um, predict where your emotions, you know what I mean? Make you fly off the handle or make you cry or make you sad. You know, don't let anybody, you know, uh, predict what you do mm. or make you do a certain thing. You decide what you want to do, you know? Mm. And so that's my big thing. I stick to my guns with that where it's like, I understand all this stuff going on and we're not in those people lives and we don't know everything that's going on and everything that they're doing True. either. You know what I mean? We, look at stuff and listen to what people say. And there's a lot of rumors and this, that, and the other, but nobody really knows the truth, you know, on what happened. So with that, I don't, I don't put myself in that same position as he 
or any other one of those guys who passed away early. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was just, you know, God, you know, call your number and it's time for you to go, regardless if you're the healthiest guy on the planet, right? you know, or you living on the streets. It really doesn't matter. Yeah. None of it's predicted, yeah. you know? So um, I just lived the best way I could, um, try to teach my kids the best way, try to, you know, show them uh, through example. Um, and like I said, it's not through selfishness or showing off or trying to prove something, but it's just me sticking to what I believe when what my dad taught me mm -hmm. was if you believe in yourself, if you believe in a certain thing, there's not only person that can stop you from accomplishing it is you. Right. You're the only yeah. person that could get in your way. I mean, in, 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 in your defense, in your case, I mean, I got to tell you, yeah, you're still training. You're still big. I mean, absolutely. You just competed like a year ago. And why not do the Masters in your case? If you, you know, and I get, I get that. You're saying, no, I'm not doing the Open because I have no business competing against these young guys no more. Yeah, because that's when I got to do some yeah. stupid shit that I won't yeah. want to do no more. Right, Trying right. to beat that size, Right, you know? right. And you're perfect for the Open and for the Masters because that's what you are. You're a master and you're a legend. You've been in the sport for forever. And, uh... But, uh, um, you know, we, we don't even have any information on the Masters. We don't know when. Yeah, done yet. We don't know when. Yeah, I, we I don't talked know. to Dan, and uh, he, I reached out to Dan, and he got back with me and said it's all in preliminary uh, stages. They're just talking about it. I reached out to Teresa. I called the IFBB office first before I reached out to Dan. And she was like, no, I don't have any information. She don't, yeah, she doesn't know. I, I, had, I had Jake on the podcast. The, okay. The Olympia owner, and, and I asked him about the Masters, and he said, "Yeah, we, that's that's in his that's the you know it's in his thoughts, and he wants to plan it. He, it might be too early for 2022, but he's thinking that maybe right. in 2023, and potentially, and this is not 100 percent potentially, this will be in maybe in conjunction with the show in Romania. Wow. So he would might not be in the U.S. You know, which is another thing. You know, people get to travel and get to compete at the Masters. We have no idea." About the prize money or none of that. Yeah, so. that's one of the key things. <laughs> that you don't you don't hit the nail <laughs> on the head right there when you I, said I, that. I know because uh, it's got to be worth it. Yeah, I remember my the, my last year competing. You know, I got the schedule you know in the mail, and I looked at. it. I was like, man, there's a lot of master shows, man. Shit, I'm gonna make me some money this year. <laughs> and I looked and looked across at no prize money, no prize money. Oh well, I guess I ain't doing that. Yeah, you know that's I mean? that's crazy. How are they gonna do master pro shows and there's no prize money? That's what I'm saying. That's why I was like, well, we can go ahead and rip this up and throw this away. I, that ain't I, happening. I and and, and I I think it's even worse. I think they got to pay entry fee. Wow. So I don't know if it's. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's oh a, my God. I don't know if it's at every show, but if I'm if I remember correctly, there's even an entry fee that you got to pay to compete. Yeah, man, that shit ain't no way in hell. I'm, I'm just be honest. There it's like no it's kind of like it's kind of like you got to pay for your own trophy. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what you do. You pay for your trophy, your T-shirt that you're gonna get. And you know they're gonna give you a T-shirt. Yeah, you know. Hopefully that's gonna hopefully that's gonna change soon because I I don't think that's fair, especially not. To the older guys that's been doing this sport for so many years, you know, and as a pro, you should. Well, be. didn't uh, didn't Dexter win a hundred grand? No, no. Wait a minute. You mean the the master last Masters of two thousand twelve? Yeah, twenty twenty. Well, it's supposed to be. It was supposed to be two fifty. Whoa! That was a huge. Yeah, that was like it was like uh, uh, it was a huge amount of money at the, the prize money. I think it was crazy. Two fifty first, like one something. What? It was. It was. Yeah, or was it two fifty total? I remember, because I remember I got third, and uh, well, here's what happened. I can tell you exactly what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so she she announced it with the prize money. Everything was fine. We got there, and the day, and you know how usually, you know, the promoters have to put the prize money in first, right? So that way we know the prize money is there. And she didn't put the prize money in, so she couldn't. She didn't have it. So basically, at the athletes meeting the day or two days before the show, we're already all there in Miami. You know, Steve told us, listen, guys, there's an issue. She, she doesn't have the money. So now, if, you got, if, anybody, wow. she, if anybody wants to pull out, you know, this is your right. So he didn't say we have to compete. After you died at all. We're already there. So we know, of course, nobody's going to pull out because we're, yeah. already, we're already here. 
you know, and, and she, she only had a certain amount of money. I think she had half of what she's supposed to pay. And then uh, I, think, I, I think I ended up getting 25. Tony, I don't wow. know. I don't remember what Tony got for, for, for second. But Dexter got 100, where I think he should have got 200 or 250. I don't remember. Exactly. Right. Well, well, but they said he was supposed to get. Yeah, I don't even know if he got 100. He might have got less than that. Wow. You know, yeah. But when Man, you but but, but but when you think about the the masters, do you do you agree with with uh, open competitors like back then when I came back for the masters, I was retired for open competitors like Dexter and Tony. Do you think that's fair to let the open competitors compete just because they qualified by age? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So how do you how do you have a master show where you bring masters, older guys back, and then you have guys that are still competing in the Olympia, step on the same stage with you? What do you go there for? I, 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 you know what? That's what's in, that was in my head because actually Brandon is a lot younger than what I thought he was, you know, and I thought, wait a minute here, you know, <laughs> I guess it has to be forty five and over. You well, know, well now, guys. now there's there's younger guys out there. But like ten years ago, ten to fifteen years ago, there was guys in their forties competing at the Olympia. Everybody was. Oh in yeah. There. So, oh yeah. So so. But, but I, what I was saying is that I thought that what you were saying that wait a minute here, like they're gonna bring back the Masters, and it was like, well, Brandon, I thought he was more. I thought he was forty. I thought he was over forty, but he's not. He's thirty eight. Um. So. I was like, man, because, uh, you know, they're going to start that in a few years. Brandon will be a master. You know what I mean? And look at him. He's a monster. There's more masters. You, know, so yeah, you only got a year or so where you got a chance yeah. to there's more masters. Know, well, and then these monsters are going to take over. There's, you know? a, there's a um, bunch of people. And it is what it is. I think it is what it is, man. Uh, um, if, if you qualify, if you qualify, if you... Look at the qualifications, and you meet the qualifications. You should be we, able to do. We it, don't know. We don't know the qualifications yet. We don't know what right. the, what, what what it's going to be. But I, I'm trying to tell myself. I said, listen, in order to attract masters, you know, you want to bring the older people back. You don't want to have the people competing today going in the show. But like we talk, wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. Like we talked about in in the beginning. We don't want to bring back too old of a master. That's also true. That's also true. You don't. <laughs> you you know don't. What I'm but maybe I'm. I'm thinking that you know. Let's say for the Masters Olympia, people that still compete in the Olympia today, they shouldn't be able to compete in the Masters in the same year. They shouldn't. I think it should be just I, Masters. An example. An example. I give you an example. It should be masters, either retired pros that are still active, like you, or people that turn pro as a master. Because there's a lot of. I get you. I a, get you. I, I I get that. That sounds. I mean, it sounds fair. It sounds yeah. good. I I I cannot agree with you, <laughs> but. <laughs> I still think if you meet the qualification age wise, you should be able to do it, yeah. man. Yeah. I, I, but I get what you said. What you said it really makes sense. Yeah. It totally makes sense. And people probably wouldn't, a lot of people would love it that way and yeah. would give a lot of people, you know, even myself, a better chance. You know what I mean? In it. If you qualify. But absolutely. If, if you qualify. But I still think, if, in all fairness, just like we talked about Sean. If you meet the qualifications, you should be able to do it. Yeah. It ain't your fault that you're still active and you look good, better than this guy who retired yeah. or he didn't. You know what I mean? Because I think I honestly here say I retired way too early. You know, yeah. um, I had a little bit momentum going, and I listened to all the noise. That was my problem, and I normally don't do that. You diet down, train hard and supplement smart for months. When the time comes to step on stage, don't leave your tan to chance. Go with the pros. Pro Tan. Number one worldwide since 1987 and the official sponsor of the Olympia for the last 15 years. Don't step on stage without it. Pro Tan. And I don't know where the hell Branch had retired. A couple had been in a couple years since Branch retired, you know? And then I'm like, yeah, man, I guess, 
I might as well do it too. I'm at, at that age. I'm 48. I'm at that age, you know. And, and I was feeling good. I won the damn Arnold South Africa, then won the Toronto Pro, and then my dumb ass retired. I should have went on another couple of years and could have possibly, you know what I mean, capitalized, you know, since a lot of other guys had moved out mm-hmm. and I had moved up a bit, you know what I mean, and improved a bit, you know, I might have could have capitalized another couple of years and, you know what I mean, made a little noise. But in listening to, oh, man, how old are you? Oh, man, don't you think it's about time? Oh, man, you know, you're getting up there in age and all that stuff started to get to me. And I was like, yeah, let me take my ass home. <laughs> You think you, you think you think Branch is going to do the Masters? No. Yeah. Nah. He, he's done, huh? Yeah, he ain't going to do the Masters, man. Yeah. And even when it, in the, uh, not even I'm saying this, and he's going to look at that and be like, man, that mom. Um, when uh, I first found out about it, and I called him, he the first one I called, of course. Like, oh man, <laughs> you know, and uh, he was like, get out of here. And I was like, yeah, and I didn't expect this. But he started talking like he was going to do it. Like, I told him, like, you know, I heard about, you know, it's going to be in 2023, this, that. And he was like, oh, man. He was like, man, you got me thinking right now. I was like, huh? I didn't, I just, I didn't know what his response I was going to get, but I didn't expect a response, you know, and him being interested in competing, you know? And he, he was like, man, you got me thinking. Man, I got a lot of stuff going through my head. Man, you know we'll train together for it. You know, if we do it, we'll train together. You know, yeah, like, he'll you know, he would help you. He would that. help you to get in shape. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, we were talking about we were going to train together to get ready for the Masters. You know, it was like you know we'll take train together. I was like, yeah. You know, and uh, we actually had a conversation. I can't even think of of everything we were said, but we actually had a conversation towards us planning to train. Once we find out the Master Olympia was going to happen, you know, and I was like, what? And but it was a conversation between me and him on the phone. And I thought, eh, I, like I got off the phone. And I was like, what the hell was that? But then we had a conversation in front of people and he was kind of, nah, I'm not. No. So, you know what I mean? I'm like, I don't think so. I, I don't I don't think he would. Uh, he definitely would train with me. He said it time and time again, if I do it. He will definitely train with me to prepare for yeah. it. But um, I don't think he will get on stage. He got so much going on. Um, it would, he, yeah, he has so much. Mm. That man has so much going on. I can't even see where he would have the time to do it, tell you the truth. Yeah, yeah. You still into powerlifting? No. So you stopped all that? Yeah, absolutely. But it's been recently. I did one last year in San Antonio. Um, I ended up pulling the 750, um, and uh, it was good. It was light. It felt good, uh, but that was the end of that. Yeah. I was like, okay, I'm done with that. No more. No more. Are you still, yeah. But you still do organizing, like, meets and stuff? Like you, you were doing Oh, something. yeah, I got one coming up May 14th. Oh, okay. Um, here in Texas, in Longview, Texas, the Iron Asylum Gym, Gym Wars, I'm calling it. Um, I have several gyms that are going to jump into it, and, um, you know, I'm giving individual prize money and uh, prizes to uh, for individual lifts accomplishments, um, but then the you know we'll take five of the uh, gym members that compete and we'll do all their totals and who got whoever got the best total will get a gym cup a big cup to sit, you know to take to the gym and sit in the gym kind of a you know talking piece and stuff like that, yeah. um, but also. Um, Andre, you know Andre from Frontline. I don't know. He uh, he's a friend of Chef, Chef Ruff. Oh, Rush. the the tall guy. Yeah. No, no, no. Not Chef, not Chef Rush, but the short guy that usually win him. No, I don't know. Yeah. Um, usually wear a cap that says Frontline on it. Uh, he's I with, maybe if, okay, I, if anyway, I see him. Yeah. Um, he owns Frontline, it's a TRT clinic, and I'm actually a member of the T that TRT clinic as well. Um, But he actually put up a thousand dollars. He gave gave me a thousand dollars. And what I'm doing with that thousand dollars is, you know, at the end of the meet, the audience, were going to vote on their favorite lifter. And so uh, man and woman, so they'll get $500 a piece, uh, the best lifter. 
So even if you don't accomplish or make the numbers, bring your best performance. You know what I mean? If you perform well, because there's always somebody you leave out of the meet. You're like, man, he grind. You know, man, she kicked ass. You know, well, that person to get voted for and get five hundred dollars for their effort. Yeah, that's good. That's you know? good. And you still have your show too, right? In Texas. Yeah, JLJ. Yeah. Oh, while we're here, are you going to come to MC? When? This year. When? August twenty seventh. Just get back with me. You yeah. ain't got to answer. We have yeah. time. When is Just it? Get, when is know, is that the same? Get back with me. Is that the same weekend as the Tampa Pro? Hmm. It shouldn't be. I know, because I know I'm, I'm, I'm emceeing the Tampa Pro this year. Tim Garner. Yeah, I'm not Tim sure Garner. when that is. I'm Tim not Garner sure when Tampa me. And then, is. And then, um, what's her name? Sheila. Uh -huh. Sheila, Sheila, she asked me, uh, she asked me about uh, maybe possibly doing the Texas Pro. Okay. So I don't know what, it's all, I think it's all in August, so I don't know the dates right now. So I'm yeah, gonna, Texas I'm gonna Pro is like a week before mine. Oh, okay. So that'd be perfect. Okay, so so hopefully it, Tampa would be a week before Texas, and not a week after because that are making would, some money. No, it's it's not about the money. It's just you know I I, I like to do stuff like <laughs> yeah, that. It ain't about the money with a smile on the face. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even say that shit without smiling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Hey, let me ask you one more thing before I let you go. I said you got your own podcast now. Yeah, man. Tell me about oh, your man. podcast. You see that that whole you had to see the whole debacle when uh, I explained that whole deal. Um, you know when uh, you know I ended up in Hart. It was in Hartford, Connecticut, where I ended up in hospital for three days uh, for all that mess. What happened? You know what I mean? Huh? What happened? Oh God! Well, you got to go look at the podcast. Well, tell me, tell me, or just tell me quick. <laughs> just make it quick, for sure. Yeah, well, basically. Um, you know, I dehydrated myself. Oh, that's a, that's an old story, though. Huh? That's a new story or old story? What? Do you ended up in the hospital? No, old story. Yeah, I know that story. That was after the show. Yeah. That was right after yeah. the show. You ended up in the hospital. I remember right. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, these guys, like, because, you know, this is one of the things that I, you know, I laugh, I, I, I laugh at my own self, man. Um, but they were trying to clown me pretty good. And they got me pretty good, um, but they don't know that, you know, when I go to, there, I've been to 60 different countries, you know, and one of my favorite sayings when I get there and I ask somebody something and they look at me and be like, yo, man, my English ain't good. And I'd be like, neither is mine. We, go, we all right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, true, <laughs> yeah. true. You know what I mean? So it is what it is, man. I, I you know, um, you, you know, I am who I am, and I, it is what it is, and I speak the way I speak. And oh, you, know what I mean? so, Whatever, oh, you mean man. somebody made fun of you because of the of the podcast? Yeah. Oh, yeah, fuck him. You know, fuck him. Um, but I didn't. Yeah, and I didn't explain myself. You know, truly explain what I was all the way through. But I didn't think I would have to. Uh, you know what I mean? I kind of was because you only I only got a certain amount of time. Right. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to crunch all this shit in and try to get out. But basically, my message was trying to get people to understand these young guys because of what's going on and how these guys are, you know, falling off you like this is be a little bit smart about what you're doing. You know, mm -hmm. um, getting blood work done don't mean that you're going to it's going to save your life, but it's going to give you a warning. You know, give you warning signs of something's going on. Right. You know what I mean? And right. check a little further if you need to. So just be smart about shit that you do. Get your shit checked on a regular before you, you know, dip into, you know, different things, you know? Right, um, right. And that's my, that was my point. And they just wanted to, you know what I mean, clown listen, and do all this other stuff. So. I, listen, we all get the same issues. So don't worry about it, man. This is this. hey, you can have, listen, as, as if you don't have people talking shit, you're not interesting. That's the way that's I see right. it. That's right. If I wouldn't be interesting, nobody would have said a damn thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's right. So if people talk shit about me, I'm on their mind for whatever <laughs> right. reason. I'm doing something right. That's the way I feel, you know. Yeah, I just, yeah. I just know you're doing the podcast. So I saw a, 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 a clip where you was doing a, it's a Generation Iron. 
Uh-huh. Yeah, and I was like, Johnny doing his own podcast? I wasn't sure if this is just a one-time thing or if this is something that you do on a regular Yeah, night. no. When I went to the Arnold, um, they came and interviewed me at the Arnold, and I gave them the breakdown of what I thought about the Arnold and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, a couple days after that, you know, Vladimir, Vlad, Vlad or I just call him Vlad, um, he reached out to me and see if I wanted to come on the Generation Iron team um, to do some um, – how they put it, um, I don't even know, um, media stuff. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I don't know what do you mean. Um, so I talked to this guy, Derek, a little bit. Um, then this, a secretary called me, set up an interview day. Um, and then Vlad called me and he did an interview. And then he was like, okay, um, I'll get back with you. I'm going to get with my people. We're going to talk about this and uh, I'll get back with you. And when he got with, back with me, asked me what I want to do a podcast and it would be more on just um, different topics and, you know, what I think about each topic. You know what I mean? So I thought it was going to bring people on and stuff like that. I, don't, I guess he was like, fuck that. We ain't going to give it. <laughs> we ain't going to let him go that far. We're going to keep him contained a little bit. So, so they just throw talk about different things and how you feel about it. So they, they throw the topics at you and you just talk about them? Well, the last topics, I've been bringing them up myself. If I need help, I'll you know, text Derek and say, Hey, give me, you know what I mean? An ideal or something like that. But so far I hadn't, I hadn't had to do that. You yeah. know, it's been coming up pretty natural and stuff like that. So I hope you get paid for, for your work. Well, I'm just saying, well, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying, I hope you do get paid. Go make that money. Don't be, don't be, don't you know? Yeah. <laughs> How's your family, man? Hey. How, how's how's the little one, man? How 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 big is she now? How tall? Oh my God, man! She's taller. She's five six. I right, get out of yeah. here. She's thirteen. She's five. Oh. Man, she's grown. Man, <laughs> you wouldn't. Need, yeah, yeah. It wouldn't. blows me away, man. I'm like, where did my baby go, man? Right. Got attitudes. Hair down her back. Is she, makeup. Is she, oh, she wearing makeup already. Oh boy! How can I? I tried to stop it. Yeah, and, but you can only fight. You only fight when mom is. You know. Oh, oh, no, wait, wait. Just see her. She okay. Um, just let it go. I remember the first time it was. I was still living in Germany before we moved to the U.S. I remember I'm in the car. I just come home from somewhere. Here come Anna. Back then, she was also like like 13, somewhere around there. And she's like, you know. What uh, what you call that shit? <laughs> Eyeshadow. Yeah, yeah, shit on there. I was like, hey, hey, hold on, come here. Where you going? <laughs> I'm looking at her. I was like, she tried to sneak out with her face down, like trying uh -huh. to show. I said, come here. I said, where you going? I said, I'm going to see my friend. I, I went with a hand and I just did this. I was like, <laughs> oh my god. Now, oh my now god. you can go. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was actually in the garage one day. <laughs> Posing with Sheila, and uh, George came out to say, you know, bye, dad, dad, give me a kiss, and she gave me, gave me a kiss. I looked, I was like, oh hell! No. <laughs> I was like, what you got her? And she had just a little bit of like cover. It wasn't no, you know, like different color. It was just like brown, right? Like brown cover up or whatever, or whatever they call that foundation or whatever. <laughs> uh, you foundation your ass and wipe that shit off. You ain't going nowhere. I know. Man. It's hard. Next thing you know, she's going to bring a boyfriend home. Shit. Yeah, we ain't, right. we ain't going there, man. Uh, it's, uh, that's what I said. Uh, listen, listen, now I'm a granddad. Yeah, I know. Congratulations, man. I never got to tell you in person. I texted yeah. it to you, man. Yeah. But my God, I cried, man. To <laughs> be honest. I that, cried. Shit was, I was like, that shit was wow. crazy. It was crazy. Man, that's awesome, man. She's beautiful. She, what a yeah. beautiful young lady you, yeah. you brought up, man. And Wow. <laughs> yeah, you she's doing she's doing good. You know, it's good to see that, you know, once they leave the house and you see everything's cool, she's got a good husband. Yeah. He's, he's That's a all you can do, man, yeah. as a parent is wish your kid be better than you. Just you hope, know, and try hope to guide him yeah. and set him up for it. Hope for her to find the right man. This is the biggest concern because I I was a dog. So right. I I know dogs. You know right. what I mean? And I know what dogs right. are capable of, you know. Wow, wow. <laughs> so <laughs> So I wanted to make sure, and she found the right one. I, seriously, the right one. He doesn't. He's never been to a club in his life. Wow. You know that that's guy awesome. who works all day, and, that, and that's all he does. Right. He says work. So yeah, I'm man. happy. I'm happy wow. for. Her. 
Me uh, too. Me too, 100%. All right, brother, man. I appreciate you taking the time, my man, talking to me, man, as always. And listen, we got to get together some sometime because, you know, I miss the good times. <laughs> my God, man. Now, damn, good times, damn, too. Damn COVID, is, damn COVID was, uh, was uh, yeah, they messed up a lot of things. So we need to get back yeah. together. Hopefully Ho- in, the, in here in the next year or so, things... You know what I mean? Get the yeah. cranking Hope, back up. And hopefully we'll, we'll, be, we'll, we'll be out there somewhere. Yeah, we may, in some country we'll, we'll run into each That's other. That's right. All right, brother, man. Take Tell the family I said I give my love to everybody, man. I appreciate you. Stay safe. And uh, I'm looking forward to see you at the uh, Masters Olympia then next year. You know it. You got to feel this gun, man. Damn son of a bitch. You're still smoking, boy. <laughs> All right, take it's care, brother. To you and your family, man. Thank you, man. you, man. All right, take care. Love you back, brother. Take care. Be safe. All right, man. Bye-bye. Yeah.